Welcome to Dan's Crypto Ventures. We've got another video for you guys today and uh, continuing to talk about the enclosure. Um, so this video is about what I would change. Um, so I did a video recently about um, did it work? Um, did it meet my goals of reducing heat in here in the basement? Um, reducing dust on the rigs? Absolutely. But there's still a significant amount of things I would change. So today we're going to talk about that. Um, one of the big things is, um, isn't a huge problem, but I do want to point it out, um, and that is the filter size. Um, so what I used was, right there is one of my filters, one on each side. I used a 12 by 20. Now the reason I picked this filter is because it was long and narrow. So I wanted it to go, you know, all the way across and be really low to ground. So the air would go in the bottom and then come up through the top. Uh, so that was the intent. Um, this one, I can go to Lowe's and buy it, um, but there's there's another Lowe's where I live and two Home Depots. None of them carry it, only that one Lowe's. Um, so it's not a huge problem. I can get it. Uh, just make sure if you guys do something similar, make sure you pick a filter size that is readily available. Um, if that one Lowe's were to stop uh, carrying it, I'd have to order it online. Obviously, I can do that, but just something to think about. Next item I want to talk about is the size of the box. Um, I made it a little too... Uh, shallow and so I'm gonna so I'm gonna show that to you here right now what I'm referring to is the dimension from there to there um, I wish I had made it a little bit bigger and it becomes a problem in looking at the fan um, and it depends on the size of fan you buy and the exact dimensions of it so the way I've got it constructed is I've got my vertical members on each side then I got this board going across here, and then, the, and then a sheet of plywood that sits on that, and then the fan sits on that sheet of plywood under there. The problem I ran into is, I realize this might be difficult on the, on the video, but the fan is actually bigger than it overlaps, and so it's actually, I had to notch out the top of these, both of these 2x4s in order to fit the fan in there. Um, and so again, I should have made it maybe four inches deeper, and uh, the fan would have fit in there much easier. Um, this sheet of plywood right here is almost entirely cut through uh, right here in this, at the center point of the fan. Um, it's only about that thick right there, um, going this way. So it's it's very flimsy. Uh, once it's in there, it's not going anywhere, but it's just, I wish I made it a little bit bigger. Um, I think that would have made that a lot, lot easier to get in and out. So, one of the next things I'll talk about is replacing the fan. One of the big things here when I was talk, building this was I talked about was I want to be able to replace things. I want to be able to replace the fan. Uh, I want to be able to remove the sides. I want to be able to these things, if I need to modify them, I want to easily be able to do that. Um, and so one of the first things is, is uh, the fan um, is not easily removable. And let me show you why. So the way I constructed it, I got this box here on top and these L brackets, these angle brackets right here. Um, I screwed them into the box and then screwed them down to this sheet of plywood to hold this box on the fan is under there the way that I get the fan out is I have to unscrew these screws here and remove the box the problem is all this stuff work up here there's no room to go up and so I have to disconnect all this duct work in order to get this box off to be able to replace the fan um, these fans are cheap I forget how much it was but they're, they're pretty expensive available at Lowe's and Home Depot um, so my thought is run those until they burn up and buy a new one um, but it's, it's a little more difficult than I would like to, um, it's a little more difficult to replace than I would like. Now, one thought I had after um, I was kind of all done was what if I had put the fans on the side? And so what if I had extended the box all the way up to the ceiling and then if I had had a, a fan mounted on one side with the same kind of a box like this um, that captured um, the, that air coming through the fan and then I had exhaust pipe that went out this side and then out um, the house. Um, that would have allowed, I think, the fan, the bo the fan easier to replace. Um, it also would have allowed the top of the rig enclosure to be higher so I could have more shelves and be able to fit more things in there. Um, so again, I definitely would have done that differently um, if I rebuilt it. And uh, actually, I've, I've been thinking about doing that. Um, it would be relatively easy to do, really, um, because... My main structure here and the floor and everything could stay just like it is. Um, it goes all the way to the deck, so it would be fine. Um, I would just need to take off these members here, and I could probably reuse those. I really just need to disconnect them and raise them up. Uh, this box, I could reuse. Um, I would just need to slap it on the side here. Um, so again, I think that would be relatively easy to, to do. 
Another change I would have made is going back to this, I want to be able to modify things easily. And so one of the things that I did made a mistake on was right here. So this is the door and the hinge and the hinge mounts to this piece of plywood. If I want to change this piece of plywood or modify it or if I want a different filter size or whatever to take this off, I've got to take the door off. And then when I put this on, that leaves the risk of um, just everything not lining up quite right and the door not closing or latching quite right. So I wish I had made this to where I didn't have to remove it to remove this piece of plywood. And again, that would have been pretty easy. What I should have done was cut the door a little bit shorter and then the same hinge could, att could attach to the, the door just like it does now. You know, go along here, but then it would go right through here in this space. So I might need to notch out the 2x4 right there a little bit so that the hinge is flush with the front of this 2x4 so that this piece of plywood can then overlap it. But that would have been pretty easy to do. Um, would have taken five minutes with the chisel and simply made the door a uh, half inch shorter than it, or narrower than it is um, on both sides. And then it would have been easy. So again, that's one of those items. Just want to make it as easy as possible to move things around and replace them or change the design if I need to. All right, the next thing I want to show you is one of the, uh, this is more about the functionality of it. Um, again, I have had really good success with this. Um, I have two GP rigs and a, uh, a Z9 Mini in here that run all the time. I've taken out one of the rigs so we could kind of get in there and look around a little bit. Um, so it controls the heat very well. Uh, but again, the intent is to put more rigs in here. And if this was taller, then I could easily fit more rigs in there. Um, even like this, I could fit more than I have in there pretty, pretty easily. Um, but one of the, and so it, it controls heat very well um, right now. But if I had more, I'd, I'd be a little concerned. And one of the reason is when the fan is running, which is off right now, so you guys can hear me. When the fan is running right, kind of right around the edges, there's a lot of blowback. There's a lot of air that comes back down. Um, and so what that is, is the fan is pushing the air up into that box. It's compressed. You know, hopefully a lot of that air goes out the duct work and outside, but some, because that pressure buildup is coming back around the edges. And I think the reason is the center line of the fan is about an inch above this piece of plywood. Um, so I might try to draw a little sketch to, to illustrate that a little bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that. Hang on. All right, so I'm over at my desk here in my basement kind of work area, and I've done a little sketch to kind of uh, try to illustrate what I believe is the problem. And um, remember, I'm not an artist, um, so it looks terrible, but hopefully to help illustrate what I believe is, is the problem. So here we have what I'm trying to refer to here is this right here is the sheet of plywood that is the top of um, the enclosure. Then I've got the fan. Yes, I know it's not to scale, but this fan essentially sits up above the sheet of plywood. And so this line right there is the center line of that fan. Then I've got the kind of the bottom of the cage and the top of the cage. And the blades are kind of in the middle here spinning. So when this is running, you got air shooting up kind of every direction. Above this, probably should have drawn it, I've got the box like so that goes above this so all that air blows into this box builds up pressure and then I've got my three um, exhaust pipes that go out to the outside well again this is under pressure so some of the air a lot of the air is going to go out the top here but some of the air is sneaking back around through here in a circle like that and um, it is actually a pretty decent amount of air when you hold your hair, hand under there you can you can feel quite a bit of hair um, <laughs> When you put your hand under there, you can feel quite a bit of air coming kind of through that gap on each side down. And so it's very windy right here, the air coming down. So that's, I think that's a big problem. Um, if I were to move this around, it would build up the pressure in this box more. And I think it's some more air going out um, the vents to the outside. So what I think needs to be done is, let me get my other crappy sketch. So it needs to be more like this. So you've got your plywood box. Again, totally not to scale. But the big point here is the center line of the fan, I think, needs to be in line with the plywood. Um, and again, your fan would be a little bit bigger than this. Right now, there's a big gap on each side. It would, it would need to fit in here pretty well. And there would probably need to be some sort of a bracket or something. I don't know exactly what. But something down here to kind of hold the fan. And then that would hold it there. Um, it would be center line up with the plywood and this fan. And that way, all this air would go up. And there, there's still going to be a little bit of air coming around, I'm sure. But I don't feel like it would be nearly as much uh, going around those edges like this. Um, so anyway, I think, that's, I think a lot of air gets pushed back in because of that. 
Um, and so if I, right now it's fine, but if I add a bunch more rigs, then I think that that problem will get worse and it could become a problem um, where the, it doesn't uh, cool inside the enclosure quite as much as it should. Great, so there you have it. There is my video on what I would change. Um, so I, I still think it was a huge success. I still think it, it met my goals and accomplished everything I wanted it to. Um, those are just some things I would change if I was gonna rebuild it. Um, I am considering that, we'll, we'll just kind of see. Um, if the market stays like it is, I may not, but if I decide to get into ASICs more or you know those kinds of things, then, then I may look into it. Um, and that, that is a possibility. Um, so if I get anything additional, I probably will make some of these changes. Um, I have a lot of the materials here. It's not like I have to go out and buy a bunch of stuff. Um, I am kind of in the industry, so I do have some of this materials readily available. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching the video. Hope you like this one. And uh, please hit subscribe and give me a like. Thanks.